uh, I'm representing the Historic Environment Scotland, but today I'm talking about uh, the work of the Historic Environment Sector, working with MEDAN, which is the Marine Environment Data and Information Network. Last time I'll say that in full. Uh, so back in 2007, the then IFA produced that maritime uh, group produced uh, a report called Slipping Through the Net, which painted a pretty despondent picture of digital ar uh, of archives in the marine sector, not just digital, but paper and physical ar archives, recognising that there's a uh, few of any public repositories where, where remitted capacity to collect or, uh, data, uh, information archives from the mar marine zone, lack of clarity over roles and responsibilities, and a ten tendency of those collections which are not split or so to remain uncurated and inaccessible. As I say, it's a fairly depressing uh, point of view. I don't have any answers to how we deal with the physical archive, the paper archives, but with working with, with MEDAN, we can start to offer opportunities and uh, solutions for working with the digital archive. So MEDAN is an open partnership. It's funded by 16 sponsors, so uh, Scottish Government, uh, various uh, UK government organisations, Agriculture, Environment, Rural Affairs in Northern Ireland, UK Hydrographic Office, also one of the marine mapping agencies, Oceanwise. These are all sponsoring agencies and uh, Medan reports to the Marine Science Coordination Committee. Um, Medan's main objective is to improve access to and management of UK marine data and information. So it's a hub for UK marine data, it sets data standards, marine data standards, and it provides expertise for the sector in about curating and sharing data. So easier data sharing. And they have a mantra which is measure once, use many times. So they're recognizing the value that you're acquiring and in creating that, that archive and making sure that you can maximize the potential of that data and reuse. Uh, key, key way of finding information is through their discovery portal. This is a very much a spatial uh, search engine which allows you to, you can enter a term and it'll, it'll find a series of results. Uh, so you can enter you know, Doggerland, you might get something there in, in, in the results. Or you can put in an organisation like Wessex Archaeology or Headland Archaeology and you get the results of any of their metadata records indexed by those terms. And supporting that is a data, net, a, a data archive centre network of uh, Seven, I think it is, seven different key themes. So from bathymetry, water column, oceanography, geology and geophysics, flora and fauna, fisheries, meteorology, and the historic environment. So we're, uh, horrible pun, we're dropping the ocean compared to the amount of data that uh, fisheries are, are creating, or meteorology, the observations that meteorology <coughs> take every day. The, the volumes of data they're dealing with are far, far greater than we, 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 we're, we're talking about. And as I say, the, de the, the DAC network, its objective is to curate information, to upload and retrieve information. Uh, it's got to be searchable and it's got to be expert. As I say, we've got se se a series of DACs, some of their single, sing single agency DAC DACs, state archive centres, such as the British Geological Survey, which is particularly interested in seabed and sub seabed geology and geophysics, uh, Met, Met Office, Marine Meteorology. And for ourselves in the marine historic environment, we've been working. Uh, Ten, five years, seven years, something like that, to, 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 to establish a, a marine historic environment data archive centre. It's tricky because we've all got different responsibilities in England, in Scotland, Wales, the Archaeology Data Services, particular remit. So actually knitting together a single DAC is not possible. So we've, we've come up with a federated solution, uh, which the ADS led the way we followed, uh, the Royal Commission recognised this year. Uh, we've been talking to Northern Ireland and uh, obviously Historic England as well. So how, does, how, do, how do we work? With information lifecycle, again, it's about how it's engaging people at the, 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 at, the, at the data creation side of things, really. As Gareth mentioned earlier, as I used to work in the Royal Commission in Scotland. We used to have our own survey programmes. It's very easy. It was a lot easier to, to engage with your own staff and tell them and instruct them how to do things. So this is this is this is one of our survey surveyors out. She's recording uh, archaeology on the Isle of Egg. There's a fish trap. We've got a description of that, that record. We've got a photograph. We've actually got survey so survey line work there. Try this thing. 
Yeah, so there's a, they've, 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 they've mapped the, um, the outlines of a fish trap, they've got photographs. All this information is transferred and put into the Canmore, the national record. It's all available online to the public. And that, that, that's all they, they care about. They don't really need to know about how that information is managed. <clears throat> Putting it on Canmore is fine. It's, Canmore provides public access to that information. It's, it's the information that Andrew was talking about. It's the management of that data behind the scenes, making sure the, the, the organization's storage is robust. We also have URLs that uh, lead, you, lead the users to find the information about the monument, associated archives, and the events that, 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 that inform our interpretation. These are not, our, put, putting information on the web is not archiving. These, these URLs can and do change. So quite often you, say, you hear people say, I've put information on the web, it's archived. No, that, that is not archiving. So, so, so we have to make sure information is behind, behind those URLs, make sure that information is accessible for the long term. Change days since the Commission. Uh, there are a lot more people doing a lot more field work now. We've heard about the citizen science side of things from the Citizen Project, for instance. A uh, lot more archaeological units working across, across Scotland and the rest of the UK. Uh, this is an example of project reporting from Orca uh, up in the Orkney, who uh, Historic Scotland commissioned uh, uh, a survey of 15 wrecks, I think it was, uh, in Scapa Flow. And this is just a, 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 one of their, 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 their pages from their PDF. Which has got a description of the of the the wreck um, visited, a location map, various photographs, and I think it's a side scan sonar of, of the wreck, which is all information in a PDF. It's there, you can look at it, but you actually can you reuse that information? I'm I'm particularly interested in extracting the information about where that where that side scan sonar was taken, what the resolution was to allow you to understand and evaluate. I'm actually seeing it in the true detail. Or could actually, is there more information we could get out by undertaking a, a higher resolution survey? And what applies in the marine environment also applies to the terrestrial work. So it's understanding is the data you've collected fit for purpose? This is just, they, they undertook side scan sonar and uh, ground truthing, uh, diver truthing, I suppose, ground truth. Uh, information, we use OASIS, we've been using OASIS in Scotland for 10 years now. So standard project metadata is produced through OASIS and that's ingested into Canmore by a manual process, copy paste. Uh, but this gives us information about the project, tells you what was, what was undertaken, when it, when it was done, who, by. And it's also seamlessly transferred to the Medan metadata portal through uh, an OA, OII PMH harvester. So the information in OASIS is then transferred, uploaded into the Medan portal so the Medin can see, people who use the Medin portal can then find information about the project. And it has a link to a ADS digital object identifier, which allows the user to go to the website in the ADS art search. The dark search these days still, yeah? No, we the library soon. Soon, yeah. So they, the DOI gives you a persistent identifier to take you to that report, and you know that report will be there. So it's is making sure the information is fully discoverable and accessible. And then this is the, 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 the metadata transferred into the project report in the ADS lab. So the data collected through OASIS is actually working very hard to, 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 to populate the Canmore record, but also to populate the ADS library. As I say, our, the full collection has been deposited and has been uh, archived at Historic Environment Scotland, so the information appears as a record in Canmore. Gives you information about the, um, the, the, the archaeological survey, just doesn't show you very much. Down here, it does, does list the number of sites that that, that, that archive links to, and you've got a catalogue index of uh, photographs and the site location page, which is very dull because it's, it's in the sea. We don't have uh, any uh, offshore mar marine chart mapping. And we have an aerial photograph to show the position of the wreck relative to the Churchill barrier. We need to make sure that one of the things we need to do is to make to, to tie the ADS record to the Canmore record so that people can then cross link and go, go from parts uh, one part of the record to the other part of the record. And as I say, Canmore also has then we've got the textual information. Thank you. 
We've got the textual information uh, on the on the camera page so people can read about the information, the diver inspection, and the side scan so sooner. I want, also want to be able to link the descriptive accounts to to, to the, the the data. And there's a need to maximise the the, the, the 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 information that's gathered by the survey project, not just the PDF, but actually the raw data. Manage that. Use use the the, the survey extension and, and and create spatial indexes. To, to allow users to, to go into the Med and Metadata portal and find where those sites have been surveyed. So the top the um, top right screen is showing the or ORCA remote sensing survey. They very kindly provided uh, shapefiles showing the, um, the the extents of the survey plots, and we've dropped that into our Canmore record, showing that against how we've defined the site records in Canmore. And then we're not the only people who've got an interest in this in the marine world. Medan has taken the view that BGS, British Geological Survey, is the DAC responsible for uh, subsurface geophysics data. So this is uh, the uh, BGS Geo Index for Offshore Data, which is showing various geo uh, remote sensing sonar sonar traces in uh, off the Isle of Mull, Tobermory. And uh, yeah, the, this 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 pattern here. As Wessex Archaeology undertook uh, a series of uh, remote sensing surveys on the uh, site of a, a, a Spanish Armada galleon. At the time, we had no capacity or capability of handling this data. The BGS was the natural place to deposit that data, certainly in the, in the, in the world of Medan. And rightly, they have then added that information into their spatial index. And that's accompanied by um, appropriate metadata to tell you who, who created the data and its um, what equipment was used, and it goes on to deeper resolution there, the technical specification to understand that data. So it's about making sure that our information fits into a common model, is shareable and transferable to other organisations. Um, and we're not really doing enough of that. We're not making, making the most out of the data that's collected in the field. We actually need to set and define the standards, the data standards that we need to define. I've undertaken a size scan sort of survey. What information have we collected? Me uh, the OASIS form does that to some extent, but we probably need to develop it more in conjunction with our partners in Medan. I think the other message from that is we, we, may, need to be, we may need to think about how archives are split. We, we, we don't have the um, priority. Yeah. Uh, we, don't, we, we, we shouldn't assume that the archive has to be maintained together. Medan deals with large offshore wind farm platform, uh, wind farm developments. There's a whole lot of interest there. The heritage is only one part of it. And maybe do we really want to be um, trying to archive terabytes of geophysical survey data offshore when BGS is much more appropriate to, to do that? has been able to then cross-reference and link data sets together. I'll stop at that point. Thank you.